Backups are important, but recovery is even more. Nobody wants to be the one who is called to recover the production database only to discover that it had never worked. Our challenge as an organization is to be ready and prepared for the next time we're called to recover from a failure on our production Postgres database. Hello, my name is Gabriele Bartolini and I will be talking about continuous backup and point in time recovery for Postgres with Barman, an open source tool for backup and recovery management. I'm delighted to be speaking at Postgres Build 2020. Before I start, I'd like to provide a bit of information about myself and my background. I have been using Postgres for almost 20 years now, and I have been a member of the community for the last 15. Second Quadrant has certainly represented the most significant part of my professional experience and career with Postgres. I joined in 2008 and covered several roles such as Head of Global Support and Lead of the Cloud Native Initiative. I'm one of the founding members and contributors of Barman as well. Second Quadrant has been recently acquired by EnterpriseDB and here I am delivering my first public speech for EDB. After a short introduction about Barman, I will share more than 30 useful tips and patterns about business continuity of PostgreSQL databases with Barman. Before the conclusions, I will anticipate some of the future plans for Barman with important news. Please follow me on Twitter and use the, these hashtags to talk about this presentation in social media. For information on Barman, please visit the website at pgbarman.org. <clears throat> I recently came across this quote by a Finnish architect named Eliel Saarinen. Always design a thing by considering it in its larger, next larger context. A chair in a room, a room in a house, a house in an environment, an environment in a city plan. I found several analogies with the way we should design database architectures for business continuity and around single point of failures. A table in a database, a database in an instance, an instance in a cluster, a cluster in the data center, a data center in a region, a region in a continent, a continent in our planet. And then I'd stop here, unless we plan to store tarballs on the moon or Mars. The first part aims to provide some context about Barman. So Barman stands for Backup and Recovery Manager. It was 2010 and I remember that we were approached by a few customers who wanted to migrate away from Oracle to Postgres. One of their main concerns was the lack of a standardized process to manage backups for Postgres, despite, despite its robustness and data durability driven design. Postgres had its own API for continuous physical backups and point-in-time recovery procedures, but the majority of users relied on custom scripts to manage backup and recovery, as well as logical backups with pgdump. Uh, we began uh, to observe and study how Oracle DBAs perform these tasks, then started a, a prototype in Python for Postgres, incorporating their feedback. We decided to name, the bar, uh, the na to name it Barman, and they happily deployed it in their production systems. It was 2011 by then. Less than a year later, we released uh, Barman open source under GPL terms, becoming one of the most popular disaster recovery tools for uh, PostgreSQL as of now. Barman introduced some innovative concepts at that time, later adopted by other tools in the Postgres backup space. This slide mentions some of the most relevant, although as you can see, most derive from a key concept, shared nothing architecture. Barman has been designed to reside on a different server where a Postgres server is, sharing nothing but the high-performing network. This simple rule enables remote backup, uh, remote recovery, centralized management of Postgres servers, 
hub for pulling wall files during recovery, including replicas, monitoring capabilities, and so on. For more information on Barman, please refer to its documentation. It is now time to introduce some of the lessons I've learned over the past uh, uh, years at Second Quadrant. Um, while developing Barman, doing consulting, and most importantly, um, as head of global support. Our rule was you build it, you own it. Having a direct channel with customers, including emergency cases where Barman saved us, certainly helped. I have prepared more than 30 patterns and tips about using Barman with Postgres in production. Let's start. Pattern zero is not to be led by tools and technical means when we make decisions. Never lose sight on the business goals and let them drive you. When it comes to business continuity, focus on RPO and RTO when making decisions. You and you only know the perfect balance between RPO and RTO for your context, which is different from anyone else's. Use these patterns to initiate dialogue with your colleagues and build the architecture that better suits your environment. Pattern one is about the shared architecture paradigm I mentioned earlier, with Barman and Postgres running on separate servers. Normally, Barman relies on commodity storage, such as uh, cheap, high uh, capacity local disks. As you will see, this is a precondition for most of the next patterns. Pattern two is about avoiding network disks, unless you have no other options or you are aware of the consequences. Make sure you regularly test the performance of both backup and recovery and set the expectations accordingly. In case of network storage, such as NFS, make sure that you place barman lock directory in a local folder so that process coordination performed by barman through locks is not impacted. While network storage might adapt very well to your context, my experience on the support front is full of horror stories on this topic. Remember that you cannot defeat latency and that network becomes your bottleneck, especially if you are using the same one gigabit Ethernet card to talk to Postgres and the storage at the same time. However, the most subtle and practically impossible to prove in production environments is when your storage is shared by several workloads beyond your control. For example, you are using an NFS storage that is shared by other departments and applications, each interfering with each other. Be prepared for inconsistent and unpredictable performance results. Pattern three is about having Barman and Postgres reside next to each other in the same data center. Based on the size and uh, recovery time objective uh, expectations, Think about having dedicated network connections between Barman and all the PostgreSQL servers in your uh, data center. The data center obviously becomes our single point of failure, but do you remember the quote I shared at the start of the talk? We need to consider the larger context, and we will do so. Pattern four is about reducing RPO through wall streaming from Postgres to Barman. Remember to ensure that all walls are properly shipped, either through standard wall archiving or by enabling replication slots. Uh, by the way, through the create slot option, Barman can take care of that for you. By default, replication is asynchronous. As we'll see, Barman also supports synchronous replication. But in that case, the advice is to have at least a standby server. 
Pattern 5 is one of my favorite features in Batman. Get well command. The main use cases are standby servers and uh, recovery from a backup. When in recovery mode, Postgres relies on an option called restore command to fetch a required world file from the archive. Um, prior to PostgreSQL 12, this option was in the recovery.com file. From PostgreSQL 12, this is a, 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 a cook option that is uh, available in the configuration file itself. The idea is to instruct these servers uh, to use the remote wall archive environment on demand through a pool strategy. Restore command can also be used in conjunction, conjunction as a fallback option with streaming connection uh, with the Postgres source, a primary or a standby in case of cascading replication. The Barman Wall Restore can be used uh, as a restore command to simplify the configuration. GetWall supports parallel prefetch and automated on-the-fly decompression of wall files. With this option, you can forget about configuring high values for wall keep segments or max wall size. Pattern 6 is about compression of your walls. You can do it through the compression option by setting it to gzip, bzip2 or pigz. Compression is performed downstream on the barman side by the wall archiver process, which is automatically invoked by the cron command every minute. The compression option can be set uh, globally and changed on a per server basis uh, if you require so. You can also use custom compression scripts as detailed in, in the documentation if you don't want to use the, the more standard uh, approaches. Pattern 7 is about a very robust architectural building block, which I internally call it the flux capacitor, in honor of one of my favorite movies of my childhood. It is a simple and yet very effective architecture that can lead to zero RPO and very low uh, recovery time objectives in a single cl cluster context. And it is made up of a primary instance, a standby instance for high availability, and the barman instance for disaster recovery. You can add more standby servers uh, if, you, if you require. As you can see, the standby server is streaming from the primary and fetching wall files from Barman as a fallback option, providing more resilience and protection from temporary network issues. The Flux capacitor is an enabler, is an enabler for cross data center symmetric architectures. So, Pattern 8 is about uh, using symmetric architectures. So it's about replicating the same architecture on another data center, or even more than one. You can have two, three, four data centers in cascading replication. The cluster in the second data center is ready to be promoted in case of disaster in the first data center. Symmetric architecture simplifies uh, management and configuration of uh, business continuity um, clusters with Postgres. Pattern 9 is a, is a reminder to encrypt at rest the volumes uh, where backup files reside. Parman relies on uh, operating system encryption mechanisms and techniques such as LUX or commercial solutions um, such as Volmetric, for example. Um, information security requires a holistic approach uh, to this problem, which involves securing connections as well as um, any access to the servers, including SSH. If you export uh, the backup files uh, as star files on tapes, uh, for example, or object stores, 
always remember to encrypt them as well. Pattern 10 is about setting uh, archive timeout to a value, for example, uh, 5 minutes or 10 minutes. By default, it is unbound, meaning that until a world file is completed, and by default the world file is 16 megabytes, but you can uh, customize that size, Postgres will not close the world file and ship it to, to the archive. Uh, Barman, by the way, supports um, custom uh, wall file, uh, wall segment uh, size, okay? Even though you might rely on partial files shipped through streaming replication, I can find this uh, a good practice, as it controls uh, the cadence of standard wall archiving through archive command. Pattern 11 is about bringing RPO to zero. For these, you need the Flux capacitor architecture that is a local standby and a Barman instance. My advice for better HA results is to set the standby as the primary sync with Barman as a potential sync. This enables administrators to perform updates and restarts of the standby without impacting write operations in the cluster. Pattern 12 is about backing up the standby servers as well to keep a symmetric architecture and avoid changing Barman configuration following switchovers or failovers. This obviously requires additional disk space, but keeps uh, configuration simple. The situation might improve in the future if and when Barman introduces cluster awareness features. Pattern 13 is about the most important command that Barman has, according to me, the check command. Check can be used to initially set up a cluster by making sure that all the components are correctly working. It can also be integrating, integrated with alerting tools. Anomaly notification is indeed one of the key required capabilities of a backup system. Through monitoring, administrators can be promptly uh, notified when an issue uh, arises. Fortunately, Barman has been designed from day one to integrate itself with monitoring tools. As part of pattern uh, 14, please monitor all the operating system standard metrics and the disk usage. And add the check Nagios command to your alerting uh, system, such as uh, Nagios or, or Itinga. Pattern 15 is to start scheduling weekly backups by defini defining the frequency of backups in a cron. If, uh, if after benchmarking and testing, you think that your recovery time objective is too big, feel free to increase the frequency uh, to a day. So every day, mm, one full base backup. Okay? The Barman Backup All uh, shortcut can be used to execute in sequence a backup of all your Postgres servers managed by the Barman instance. Pattern 16 is about defining global retention policies for your Barman installation so that obsolete backups are automatically purged by Barman. Barman supports two types of retention policies based on number of backups, redundancy, or time, more precisely, point of recoverability. For example, with uh, redundancy 2, Barman will keep the last uh, two backup files. Okay, when you backup the third, the, the first backup is removed. With a recovery window of two weeks, uh, Barman makes sure that we can perform a point in time recovery at any time between now and two weeks ago. You can use delete hook scripts if you want to perform automated actions 
before or after a backup or wall file is uh, removed. Pattern 17 is about relying on rsync over SSH to perform backups, so to enable both incremental and parallel copy. Incremental copy relies on hard links and can reduce both backup time and backup size. It is therefore a file level incremental copy. The same incremental and parallel algorithm is used for both backup and recovery operations. For example, one of our customers has a 25 terabyte database. Thanks to incremental and parallel backup, they can reuse over 70% of the data files in the previous week and completing in about 13 hours. It is important to note that uh, backup operations has, uh, have no significant impact on production performance and operations while they're running. Pattern 18 is about extending our context beyond the data center for, and for larger uh, retention periods. Barman can be used to relay world files and backups to S3 compatible object stores in public, private, and hybrid cloud environments. You are required to install the Boto3 library and the Barman Click Cloud package, which contains all the cloud applications for backup and recovery of walls and backup files um, in using S3 compatible uh, libraries. An example of S3 integration is to use hook scripts for wall archiving and backups to relay to object stores uh, from Barman. Alternatively, you can directly archive wall files to cloud objects, uh, cloud object stores via Barman Cloud Wall Archive and backups in the form of compressed tar files via Barman Cloud Backup. Pattern 21 is about relying on local object store gateways to then relay to multiple cloud object stores. This is our preferred choice, for example, in Kubernetes, uh, where uh, we can use, for example, MinIO uh, to act as a gateway for us and then, you know, set retention policies there and uh, instruct MinIO to send to all the major uh, cloud providers we want and select the regions and so on. Pattern 22 is about a feature called geographical redundancy. Consider this, is this scenario, for example. In the first data center, you are backing up Postgres uh, server PG1 locally with Barman. In the second data center, you can configure uh, the barman um, so that there's a passive server called PG1, which uses the other barman in data center one, uh, the other barman um, definition as the source. Uh, copy of files, so backups and walls, is performed in, a, in an asynchronous fashion and uh, relies exclusively on rsync of the SSH. Similarly, you can set the PG2 server in the other direction, having a cross backup scenario. Pattern 23 is about enabling immediate checkpoint in the configuration to speed up the start of the, of the backup process by requesting a fast checkpoint instead of waiting for the spread one. Pattern 24 is about uh, a few best practices that increase the release resilience of the backup system through Barman Check. Always set minimum redundancy to 1 if you want Barman to prevent you from deleting the only available backup you have for a given server. Set the last uh, backup maximum age based on the frequency of the backups. If, for example, you have weekly backups, set it to a week so that Barman Check will complain if the last backup is older than uh, a week, meaning that for some reason the periodic backup did not start. 
The last one helps detecting a bottleneck in the downstream archiving uh, process. Pattern 25 is about having a separate configuration file for each of the servers that need to be managed by PowerMed. Files with .conf extension need to be placed in the uh, slash etc slash folder. My advice is to name the files using the server ID and the major Postgres version. For example, chat-13.conf contains uh, the configuration of the chat database running on Postgres uh, 13. Pattern 26 is to always update Barman to the latest uh, stable version, as Barman is backwards compatible. Trunk-based development and a comprehensive set of automated tests give us enough confidence that the latest commit on Trunk is always the best available version of Barman ever. Pattern 27 is about taking advantage of convention over configurations. Uh, configuration. All options have default values. Most options in Barman can be set in the main barman.com file and then redefined and overridden at server level. If you use RPM or Debian packages, system configuration is already taken care of uh, by creating a Barman user, cron entries and log files including their rotation. Pattern 28 is about plugging Barman with um, external systems through uh, hooks. They are available before and after certain events in Barman, such as backup, wall archive, recovery, and so on. Hook scripts are of two types, depending on their retry capability. Standard ones do not retry in case of failure of the hook script that uh, you have called. Retry scripts can, on the other hand, retry indefinitely in case of failure, although you can, you can manage and, and stop them at, at some point. Okay? Uh, for details, please uh, consult the documentation. For example, you should use a pre-wall archive retry script if you intend to relay a wall to an S3 bucket in the cloud so that uh, in case of failure, Barman will retry until the process succeeds. Pattern 29 is about always setting the batch size for both wall archiving and wall streaming. By default, the wall archiver that is triggered by the cron command every minute processes all the wall files that are currently in the queue. My advice is to tune this value based on the number of wall files that can be processed in a minute. As a rule of thumb, a number between 10 and 100 for most uh, workloads. Each barman command supports the output format in JSON, uh, which can be used for integration with external tools. This is very handy. As of Barman 2.11 and with PostgreSQL 10 onwards, you can apply Pattern 31. Uh, POLA or principle of least authority. Instead of relying on super user privileges, Barman can be a standard user with specific grants for backup and read operations. Also, Barman streaming can be used for replication connection only. Pattern 32 is about never became, becoming complacent and let the guard down. Have a process that systematically tests your backup by recovering them. Preferably use hook scripts to automate the process. For example, post backup uh, scripts to issue a remote recovery. Pre-recovery hook scripts to set up and prepare the remote environment. Post recovery uh, hook scripts to start the cluster and perform, for example, data reconciliation, normalization, and, and cleaning, and so on. Business continuity is a context in which we can fortunately apply a deterministic approach. There are known unknowns, and our duty is to practice and measure recovery operations. We need to know that backups work and how long it takes to recover from a backup. Regularly recover a standby or a QA environment or a BI database. 
Remember that this is the recovery time objective in the worst case scenario. Pattern 33 is similar to pattern, pattern 0. Uh, remember, focus on, on your goals. This is to start simple and enhance gradually. Consider the case of Postgres with just a Barman instance. Postgres and Barman. What is the RPO? What is the RTO? Are they enough for my business? If not, move to the Flux capacitor and measure the goals. If they're not enough, use symmetric architecture and expand the context to a multi-data center cluster, and so on. Remember the quote I shared at the start. Always address the current single point of failure and be ready to target the next. So we are at the end of the talk and I want to share some important information about the future of Barman. As you know, Barman has been, um, as you know, uh, um, Enterprise DB has acquired second quarter, second quarter at the end of September. EDB is committed to the future of Barman through new leadership, management, and development teams. This means that the original team, including myself, is stepping down from any active involvement in Barman uh, after so many years, although we will still serve as advisors. My focus, for example, is now on Kubernetes, and I will make sure that Barman will have its, the space it deserves in cloud native environments. It also means that new people and ideas will flow in Barman and we need them. My dear friend, trusted colleague and Postgres developer Abhijit Menon Sen will be leading the development of Barman with Sebastian Manem as product manager. So we, we're in very good hands here. So on top of the integration in Kubernetes with an operator for Barman, we will be working on compressed backups, tier two, and relay on object stores, tier three. Other interesting ideas are being evaluated and are, for example, by the new team and are, for example, integration with PG, PG Verify Backup and Snapshot Backups, um, for example. So we made it and it is time for some takeaways. So Please do not take the provided path patterns as if, as if they were written in stone. Use them as initiators, triggers, and enablers for dialogue in your team and your organization. Always focus on the goals and enhance gradually. Constrain your RPO and evaluate zero data loss scenarios. Measure your recovery time objective in a systematic way and be prepared for the next incident through testing and practice. In terms of architecture, reflect and think about the Flux capacitor model with a primary, a standby, and a Barman server, which can be shared among different Postgres clusters. Finally, enjoy Barman. Barman is stable, it is robust, and it is used by some of the largest Postgres users in the world. Um, and Postgres companies in the world. And it is open source. Thank you for listening. I will be happy to reply to your questions in the live session. Ciao.